It's been a little while since I have thanked new Patreon patrons. So a massive, massive thank you to Joey LeBlanc, Theo Wilson, Gallic, Hellross and Graham Buck, who've all supported the channel on Patreon over the last week. Thank you very, very much for your support. If you'd also like to get involved in the Patreon, you can support the channel and support me at patreon.com slash Thank you to everyone who's already been involved. And also early warning that this is going to be the last video in this series uh, this week <laughs> yay everyone's cheering last video no it's not the last video in the series full stop um it's the i'm not going to have a video in this series out on saturday or sunday i'm in blackpool all weekend for play expo blackpool if you're going to be there come and say hello to old kev there are going to be videos over the weekend they're just not going to be expedition of gold videos so the next one of these will be out on monday there is a special sugar daddy that's going to be out over the weekend plus maybe something from the play expo thing if i manage to get something thrown together on the saturday we shall see there might not be a video at all on sunday but there you go early warning you all know now Hello and welcome to part 10 of the German leg of the Expedition of Gold. I'm Kev and coming up on today's episode we're at home against Augsburg in the Bundesliga and then we've got the second leg of our Champions League first knockout round against Paris Saint-Germain. This is not just any old Paris Saint-Germain. This is multiple time winners of the Champions League Paris Saint-Germain. They've won it four times over the course of this save, most recently five years ago. But in the last 10 years they've won it three times. They are quite the dominant team. And we beat them in the first leg. A few people, including me, were wondering just how good we were going to be outside the Bundesliga, whether the Bundesliga was just a really weak league. Well, we went away to Paris Saint-Germain, as previously stated, dominant, rich Paris Saint-Germain, and we beat them 1-0. So we're pretty good outside of the Bundesliga as well. I don't understand how this squad, minus four or five players really really squeaked into the Champions League via the back door last year some serious mismanagement going on that aside we're still on our super long and beaten run the discussion about whether this is an overpowered tactic rages on in the comments please feel free to get involved in that I'm quite interested to see people's views on it and if it is overpowered what makes it overpowered now compared to the first 20 seasons of this save when it definitely wasn't some people saying it's defenders, some people are saying it's the quality of your strikers, just the quality of your players overall. I'm interested to know what you think. I am, once I get back from Blackpool, going to look into putting the tactic up on Steam Workshop. I mean, it's it's fairly easy to replicate. There's no player instructions. So take a screenshot of that, take a screenshot of that, make it happen. You don't need a download. But if, if you want a download, I'll try and do that. But I am interested to know how you find this tactic in your saves because I've tried it with other teams in other saves and it hasn't been as successful. Obviously, with both Tottenham and Bayern back-to-back, -back, it's been incredibly successful. But could that just be that we had really good players? Let me know down in the comments what you think about that. But we need to get into these games. So this is our team for the Bundesliga game against Augsburg, Augsburg. We are struggling, struggling a little bit at left back. Um, Lafarge is injured and Yule is suspended, so Cambon moves across to play at left back, bringing Chesney back from the midfield position. He's been occupying quite a lot recently. Other than that, fairly strong team. Malashev is close to being fit again. He's going to be full training again in a couple of days. Whether or not we see him against Paris Saint Germain really depends on whether or not he passes a fitness test. He's, I think, he passed a fitness test for this game. He's on the bench anyway. But as we all know, Kev doesn't pick the substitutes. Don't mind me. I just ate a cricket. Very unpleasant. Check the vlog channel if you want to see me eat a cricket. Uh, so our team, we've got Clementino in goal. A back four of Cambon, Montez, Orlandi and Chesney. Toynison, Balbiano and Gruber in midfield. With Di Maria in behind Clemente and Berger. Few changes to how you've seen this team recently. I'm playing. Uh, I'm trying different players and different options. Gruber as a normal midfielder, Clemente and Berger the other way around. We're trying a few things out. We're finally trying Balbiano as the central midfielder on defend. He didn't really like doing that earlier in the season, but we've been training him to do it, and he is getting a little bit better at it. But what I'm finding, the odd little blip aside, where we labour to a draw or. A, make it more difficult than it needs to be, I'm finding that regardless of the combination of players and where we put them, 
we're still very, very dominant. As you can see, that league table, we're 12 points clear at the top of the league with 10 games left to go. Although, 15 minutes in, we've not had a shot. Augsburg have had two on target, playing the, the famous flat-back nine. So, that's a bit of a problem. Am I bigging this team up too much? Have we got one eye on Paris Centre and 20 minutes in? We've still not had a shot. We're not getting any of the possession. What have I broken? I've got it on attacking today rather than control. Is that causing a problem? Luckily, it looks like we're getting a penalty. So our first shot of the game is going to be from the penalty spot on 20 minutes. What variety of penalty are we going to get today? Who's number 16? Di Maria, of course he is. And it's a save, so we don't even get to see what variety of penalty it is. Di Maria just missed a penalty. The man's a robot. How can a robot miss a penalty? I don't understand. Surely he just weighs up the mathematical possibilities and scientifically places it in an unsavable position. But apparently that's not what's happened on this occasion. And I hope this isn't the beginning of the end. I'm mocking it a little bit because I don't think it can. I genuinely don't think we can bottle it from here. And if we do, please feel free to rip into me in the comments and tell me what a useless football manager I am kind of already know I know that we've stumbled across a good tactic eventually and managed to come to a couple of teams with big transfer budgets so we've been able to bring in good players and we've put those good players in a good tactic and it seems to be that that as a strategy if you are new to football manager that's Kev's tip of the day try and get good players and then put them into a good tactic and you'll probably win a lot of football matches I mean that's that's a master class in football manager right there um, our attacking players are just rubbish today. Obviously, in general, they're pretty good. Should we, should we bring Malashev on? I mean, he's not fit, but what's the harm? What's the worst that's going to happen? He's going to get so injured. Um, we'll also bring on Mikels and stick Gruber up behind the front two. So Malashev's getting 20 minutes. This is how we'll find out if he's going to be fit for Paris Saint-Germain. We'll break in today to guarantee he's not. Or he might score one of his famous screamers. Chesney to Mikel. So we're going to grab a goal here. It's Malashev rounds the keeper and sticks it into, we're going to call it top corner, even though we don't know that's what he did. But Malashev, when he's fit, is just different class to everyone else, including the robot Di Maria. Malashev is head and shoulders above everybody. We just need to work out how to get... 30 or 40 games out of him in a season but that's going to be somebody else's problem because we won't be here next year and I dare say we won't be anywhere that's going to be able to afford to sign him and that's that's a very good goal well played Alexander Malashev I'm tempted to take him off now he'll have had his 10 minutes he's scored the goal that we needed but instead we'll take off Clemente bring Anicic on Anicic has spent quite a lot of time playing as a striker recently certainly since Vukatic is that his name since he went out on loan um, Anicic has kind of emerged as our extra striker. I know we signed Piero on loan, but look at the attacking players we've got and you tell me where we fit Piero into this system. I suppose that would be one way to make the league a little bit more challenging, play Piero in every game. But my my whole excitement about signing him was that we could get him the Champions League medal he missed out on with Tottenham, but went to register him for the Champions League squad and he's cup-tied. He's already played in it for Spurs this season, so... We, we weren't able to register him, so he's not going to get a Champions League winner's medal this year, even if we manage to win it, which is really unlikely. Remember how unlikely that is. Um, Augsburg have gone down to 10 men, which has made them more attacking, inexplicably. They've stuck a couple of extra men forward, but hopefully it's going to be too little, too late, and they've won the ball back here, and they've got the chance to have one proper attack, but it's not going to happen. Toynison to Gruber. Can he find Malashev? He doesn't. It goes out to Chesney, who tries to find Anicic, and we're knocking the ball around quite nicely now in the 92nd minute. Why couldn't we do this all game? That's... An inch at this flock guy on the left wing has been a bit of a pain in our backside all game long. Mikel's just brilliantly there though, and it doesn't matter because the game is over. We did, stats wise, we did okay in the end. We've laboured, very much laboured to a 1 0 win again. This has happened quite a lot recently, but more important than any of that, it's another win. We're 14 points at the top of the league now with 10 games to go. And now we just need to go and finish the job against Paris Saint Germain. No messing around then for the Paris Saint-Germain game. We want to win this competition now. I've officially decided. So Yule comes back in at left back. Cambon dropping out of the team. Chesney keeping his place at right back. The midfields, Balbiano, Toynesen and Mikels. And we've swapped Berger and Clemente back round again because it really didn't work. Having them the other way round 
in the last game. We're on a control and flexible, the traditional system. And remember, we are 1-0 up from the first leg, so we've got our away goal. And they're playing a Christmas tree. Goodness me. There we go. Let's um, let's see how we handle a Christmas tree. I don't recall playing against one of them any time recently. But potentially, of all the tactics they could play, that, that's one that could handle us quite well. We're 1-0 up. I hadn't even finished the sentence. See? Tactically inept Kev. This is why you just stumble across a tactic that works and then never, ever, ever change it. Because changing it won't work because you don't understand the tactic system properly. You just have to hope you stumble across another good one one day. We managed it last year. We stumbled from a 4-3-1-2 into a diamond into a 4-2-3-1 across last year's non-league legend. This year, every time I try and stumble into something else, it doesn't work. And keep ending up back with this. So... What are you going to do? I'm not going to lose games deliberately when I know how to win them. Um, Montez comes in with a good tackle. I mean, really, from this point on, we just need to not do anything stupid. We're in a similar situation in this game to what we are in the Bundesliga, in that if we don't now go through to the next round, it's because of a bottle job. This one, you don't have permission to destroy me in the comments because a one-off, one-game bottle job against a real dominant team like Paris Saint-Germain, that's the sort of thing that does happen sometimes. But the, the Bundesliga, we are, we're obviously going to win or else call me all of the bad names. Um, please don't call me the really bad ones. I'm a sensitive soul. Uh, Toynison comes in with a good tackle there. And we I thought we were going to build from the back there. Apparently not. But we have a corner and it's fallen to Clemente and it's 2-0. And that surely is that. Clemente's got different hair than he had the other day, hasn't he? Was he the one who had my hat hair yesterday? I feel like... Is this how all Brazilian wonder kids work? You'll remember, those of you who were around last year, Lacio from our save last year, who was our Brazilian wonder kid who copied my haircut, and his hair would change from game to game into all sorts of different styles. And I think Clemente is operating on the same system because I'm sure he had the flat-to-the-head hat hair look last year episode but now he's got a full-on fluffy business going on what is happening here i don't understand he scored again by the way in case you're wondering and it's now three nil and that's a nice little finish and we are comfortably better than paris saint germain so there you go for those of us who are trying to work out just where this team stacks up in the grand scheme of things in europe i mean really what we're all thinking is how does it compare to the tottenham team of two years ago forget that useless tottenham team of now who's Mostly the same players, but they've been played in the wrong system by an idiot, um, which is why they're not dominating everything all the time. But I am in. I would like to see. And is there a way to do it? I wonder if there's a way to network game with myself and just sort of. I want to put my Tottenham team up against my Bayern team, both of them playing the same tactic, and just see which one's better. Let's see which players are better. I mean. Attacking-wise, obviously Tottenham are better. Ira Baron, Wells, Oscar. Well, Ira Baron and Wells are better than anything we've got here. Is Oscar better than Di Maria? It's difficult to say with only one season of Di Maria. I'm temp I'm, I would say Oscar probably is better than Di Maria. Defensive-wise, I think, I think this team probably has it. We didn't have anyone in the league of Orlandi at um, Tottenham apart from what was the what was the guy we signed? Aribi, he was pretty good. We'll have him. We'll have those two together at the back. We're doing a off the cuff team of the team of the save for no reason. Why is this happening? Um, left backs. I suppose we have to go with Ribeiro from Tottenham, and who was our right back at Tottenham? And I see, and I was never really any good, but then neither is Cambon. <laughs> who did we have at Ipswich? Can we have Lazaroff from last year as our right back? And then in midfield, it gets really hard because we've got exceptional midfielders at both clubs I don't see how you avoid having Fiorentini in there but at the same time I think Toynison is outstanding Mikel's is very very good Zayac can we play four in midfield and not play a right back is that an option I think we'll do that forget the good tactic that's I mean that's a fairly even mix of both teams let me know down in the comments who your combined team from the the squads that we had at Tottenham and the squad we've got at Bayern who would be your 11 on your combined team and while you're just jotting that into the comments we're going to travel into the future and see who we get in the next round of the Champions League oh didn't notice we had to play another game before the draw 
but the draw. Um, so I haven't actually checked if Tottenham are still in it. There's obviously eight teams left. It's the quarterfinal draw. Tottenham are not in it. I was hoping we were going to get the dream draw and we were going to get to find out just how good we were compared to them because we'd be able to play them. But I guess this confirms we're officially better than them. So looking through the... T I tell you what, we could win this. Let's draw some teams. So, oh, we're out of the hat first. We don't really want to be at home first. We just want to avoid Barcelona. I'm happy with anyone else in that draw. Maybe let's avoid Man City as well. And we, Fenerbahce, we can, we can handle Fenerbahce. Let's do the rest of the draw. But that's going to be what we do for our next Chelsea Barcelona. That's massive. Um, so our next episode is going to be us against Fenerbahce. Are we just going to do both legs? It might even work out that we can do all three of them. And that might be the game that can win us the league. I'll have to do some maths. We'll figure something out. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you pop a like on there for me. Subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more. And thank you very much for watching. And remember, this series back on Monday because I'm in Blackpool.